Thursday, September 16th, 21, after the hour of 6 o'clock. And let's get into a very uh, serious discussion. It's one that pertains to the future of the nation, the children of the nation. Now, the reality is, when it comes to atrocities and people who are predators and who indeed harm the children, it's something that's not recenter. But what we can say as it relates to the, the silver lining, I would imagine, on this, particular, uh, on this particular situation is that now there is more awareness, more of these cases are coming out, and there are indeed authorities trying to render some kind of assistance in that regard. Let me bring forward Marlon. Marlon, who's going to join me here on the Zoom wall, Marlon Bascom from the Children's Authority of Trinidad and Tobago. Uh, Marlon, good morning to you. Welcome. Um, it's a hard discussion, sometimes one that conjures a certain emotion, but it's one that we must have if we are trying to advance ourselves and, and, and come around this particular dark corner. Yes, good morning, uh, JW. Good morning, China and Tobago. You know, thank you for having us on. Um, you know, child protection is everyone's business, so we are very happy to be on to just you know, continue the discussion as hard as it is and to share as much information as we can so that we can continue, all of us in Trinidad and Tobago, to protect our children. Indeed. You know, the children are, you know, the vulnerable. You know, at the end of the day, most of the times, from, from, from since back in the day to even present, present time, many of the atrocities committed to the children are funny enough from people that they know. I mean, it's not no laughing matter. It's unfortunate. It's a heartbreaker. Yes. And it's people who sometimes these children trust. Um, when you all do your investigations, how do you now try to bring healing and try to bring a child back into some place of, of normalcy when somebody who is so close to them would have broken that trust? Well, as you rightfully said, um, a lot of the time, a majority of the time, the alleged perpetrators are persons that the, that the children know. And yes, we are talking about mothers, fathers, aunties, uncles, you know, other relatives, grandparents sometimes. And it can be a difficult process, but we engage in a lot of direct intervention with our caseworkers, with our psychologists, as well as in partnership with other agencies <clears throat> to make sure that we can provide you know, whatever is, is specifically needed on a case by case to provide uh, support to, to that particular child going through the issue, as well as providing, you know, healing for the entire family. So, such intervention would, yes, take the form of therapy when needed. It may take the form of medical intervention with the support of our of great, you know, medical professionals within the public service. Uh, it may take the form of ensuring that, you know, parents or guardians receive, you know, parental training. Someone who needs it may receive anger management. Someone who needs it may, may receive um, training in dealing with any substance abuse and so on. Uh, with the end goal of ensuring that, you know, the child and the family can return to a level of normalcy um, as it should be, you know, pre whatever form of abuse may have occurred. Let me, ask, that would have us to Let me ask you, Marlon, in the case of a, a, a sexual, uh, a sexual, something of a sexual nature, is the child removed from that particular environment, removed from the space? Uh, walk to me through that scenario, because we saw a couple of cases in the public domain recently of, of sexual penetration of minors, sexual touching from, again, people who these children trusted. Yes, so, and, you know, the public, a lot of the times, they think that the children's authority removing children is, is what we do. Um, you know, I want to reassure persons that that is only a last resort measure, and it is only done in instances where the child is in, for want of a better word, you know, care and present danger. So in instances, for example, where, you know, sexual touching or, or sexual penetration may have occurred, right? Um, there, are, there are particular situations within that where the child may be removed, particularly, let's say, for example, um, the, the child's mom may not be the perpetrator, <clears throat> but the child's mom, you know, may not have, have taken active steps to protect the child from harm. So if it is, we, we, we do believe that the, the child is in danger of continuing to be um, violated in that way, we may remove for a period of time until we can 
you know, sort out the situation and removal, maybe just removal to another relative, you know, auntie and uncle, maybe the grandparents, maybe, or the, uh, the child may be received fully into care either through the foster care system or into one of our community residences, which the public knows as the, the children's homes. Once these uh, cases go before the court, uh, are you required sometimes to go into that space to testify and give certain recommendations? Tell me about that particular procedure as it relates to when this goes into a legal framework. So, uh, two aspects happen concurrently. One, we work very closely with the Child Protection Unit and the Police Service, and so they conduct a criminal investigation, and that may eventually uh, make it through the criminal courts, right? But we are also guided um, strongly by the children's court after we conduct our psychosocial investigations. And so the children's court would guide us with respect to our, our interventions that we've been speaking of. Um, if we have removed a child, we would, we would explain to the court the reasons why we have done so. Um, and as we work on the case, as we develop, you know, what is known as a treatment plan or a case plan, we would, you know, go through that process with the guidance of the children's school. But yes, when, when necessary and where there's a, a, a criminal matter, it is possible for, for persons to give evidence as, as needed or, or to provide reports to the court as needed um, based on our, you know, our investigations. Marlon, if someone is watching us this morning and they've noticed a visible change in a child, a change in a child's attitude, uh, someone in the area is hearing, let's say, physical abuse, a child getting, getting wheel up, uh, and, and the concern and, and they, they want to probably reach out and, and you know reach out to the children's authority how do they how, how does how, how, how do they do that and, and what's a probably a contact what way they can they can reach out in a confidential manner to, to bring forward something they suspect that's happening so the, the best possible way is our 24 hour hotline which is 996 so you can call 996 or 800 2014 it's 24 7. you can even report anonymously if it is you so wish please feel free to call at any point in time uh, you know and give us information so that an investigation can occur or if it's an urgent situation so that we would know to work with the police when needed to go immediately and, and intervene right that's 996 or 800 2014 you know as i said at the beginning you know child protection is everybody's business um, we will not be able to intervene unless we know. So we will continue to appeal to the public to please let us know, make the call, you know, get us involved if you believe there's a situation where a child is potentially being abused. I mean, obviously, you will do your due diligence because anybody can call and say anything, but you will go and conduct your investigations and ensure that this particular claim is accurate, yes? Yes, yes, we, we would. We would. So, I mean, we don't expect you as the, as, as the public to go and investigate yourself. But do give us all the information that you are able to give us, and we will go out, um, you know, and you know, look at the situation, conduct a home visit, speak to the the, the neighbors, um, engage with the police where necessary. You know, we, we will get to the meat of the matter, or the police will get to the meat of the matter as you know necessary. Do you partner with any other agencies, uh, government agencies, or NGOs, as it relates to this holistic approach? A rehabilitation of a child who would have probably gone through some sort of abuse physically or, or, or sexually? Yes, definitely. So I, I've been speaking of the Child Protection Unit and the Police Service. We've also been working very well with the uh, Interagency Task Force. We've been working well with the Victim and the Support Unit. Um, we, we work very, very well with the National Family Services. Um, in terms of NGOs, we work well with the Rape Crisis Society. Um, you know, we work well as well, given uh, the non-national population with the counter trafficking unit of the police service. Um, we reach out in partnership with many, many agencies to, to be able to treat with this, with this issue. That includes uh, the Ministry of Health and the, and the various RHAs in helping us um, provide medical intervention for children as needed. Marlon, were there more cases because of the COVID-19 and lockdown scenario where more adults are at home, with children, uh, cases of abuse or, or, or sexual um, misconduct? Well, what, what we have seen is not necessarily um, more cases of, of physical abuse or sexual abuse. What we, what we instead have seen is a lot more cases of uh, you know, emotional abuse 
or you know mistreatment or maltreatment of parental other cases of, of neglect we've seen more of that in the in, in the data um you know as, as the public may know there are various forms of abuse so we are seeing more of that type in terms of the neglect and so on right now unfortunately we do have a significant issue with respect to physical abuse sexual abuse um in particular and that that has continued Marlon, how do we get over this hurdle? People take pride. Some of the older citizens take pride in saying, well, you know, my mother and my granny beat me and, and licks never kill, and look how come out good today. And there are folks who believe that going to the strap and going to the belt and, 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 and using that kind of uh, correctional method still could work in this time where children and the times have clearly changed. Well, I mean, we, we definitely have to continue to, to educate ourselves, to educate each other, to talk with our children on a line of communication with them, you know, from small, from as soon as, as they're able to communicate with us, we should also be able to communicate with them. Um, there's a very thin line between that corporal punishment, uh, you know, and abuse, or we may think we're not being abusive, but we may, we may engage in verbal abuse without, without, without knowing it. Or oh, especially now when COVID, as, as times are hard, we may find ourselves shouting at our children and not really thinking of it, where the child may have an experience of, 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 of being abused. So, you know, we need to, we need to as you said, we, have, we need to look at changing our, our approach when we engage in our children. And I think that starts with that open line of communication between parent and child. Um, and we, we definitely need to look at their behavior over time. You know, if a, if, a, if a child is active and happy all the time, it's suddenly very reserved, very quiet, uh, you know, and the child is not sick, do, do, do check out, you know, what is happening there because the child may be experiencing something and you as a parent may not be aware of, of, of what is happening or how they may have reacted to, to how someone may have spoken to them or punished them, or it may even be a more sinister situation going on. So, you know, we have to continue to, to educate ourselves, educate each other. Even those of us who are older and who would have grown up with, with, with corporal punishment, you know, I, I, as you said, it may not be the best approach now in, in 2021 for our children. Um, so, you know, we need to just continue to work at it, uh, and it's going to continue to take a lot of work. Marlon, I want to thank you for your time, and I want to end the same way I started by saying and suggesting that, you know, what we see today is not something new. This has been going on for years, but there, were, there weren't really any outlets back then, and because of that, so many children turned into adults and they were damaged. Now at least there is uh, a light at the end of the tunnel with agencies like the Children's Authority and the people that you partner with to assist in that regard. Before you go, just give us the information one more time where we can contact you if we see something looking a little bit off and we want to contact the agency so you all could do your investigation. Yes, definitely. Please call us at 996 or 800-2014. Those are 24-7 numbers, so you can call now, you can call at midnight. Please call us. Uh, if you see something, do say something. Child protection is everybody's business, and we do need your help and support to continue you know, this difficult task sometimes of protecting our children. You know, thank you for having me, Indeed, and we will touch base soon. Yes? Indeed. Important work there by the Children's Authority, and that's one that we must keep in mind. We must protect the children. I mean, listen, these things touch you in a different, different way when you are indeed a parent. And I'm a parent, and, and most of us here, you know, we get emotional sometimes when we learn and, and read of some of these cases. So let's all do our part. It starts with you. It starts with me. Change begins with with what we do to help, especially the children of the nation, the vulnerable. We take a quick one, we come back and we get into the discussion of export. We deal with some business, serious talk, some export business talk when we come back after the break. Stay with the team, it is The Morning Brew here on CNC3.